she way too pricey. Chain on my neck, be little icy. I brought the strap in the club, cause they don't like me. Big chain on my neck, that bitch little icy. I know you can't fuck my bitch, she way too pricey. I can't go down on the bricks, they way too pricey. Yeah. Alright, man. So, uh, Favo, uh, how much time you got? Man, I, I got 10 years. That, that, that's how much they gave me, man. 10. Nah, nah, yeah. Um, on, on the phone, man. How much time? Oh, oh, okay. I got about maybe 10 minutes. Alright. Do this. Cool. Alright, cool. I'm gonna make this quick. Uh, man, we got Favo, yeah, yo, on the line. You wanna say anything to the people? Man, what up, man? This Favo, yeah, yo, man. You know, I'm just, uh, I just want to wish uh, everybody nothing but positivity, man. You know, there's a lot of uh, talent out there, a lot of creative people. All I can tell you is uh, keep pushing, keep hustling, man. And uh, big shout out from Fable Radio. That's it. Man, so, um, man um, Fable, um, so May 6th, uh, 2019, uh, you got picked up in a traffic stop. Um, yes, now, sir. before you got stopped, was you know what I'm saying? How was your day? Was it just a normal day? Did you know what I'm saying? Did you have a bad feeling that anything was gonna happen? Yeah, man, I actually did. My my intuition, man, was actually telling me to just chill. You know what I mean? Everybody got that 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 godly intuition in them, you know, and and some may think it's like God communicating with them. Some may think it's like God communicating with them, or some people just think it may be like an instinct. But yeah, I definitely, I most, de I had a bad dream, man. I had a bad dream that I was in jail, and uh, you know, about twenty hours later, I'm in jail. It was, it was crazy. Uh, so you know, I know in, in regular jail, you know that you can you get a bond. Um, you 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 went to the feds. Um, did you try to get bonded out at any time? Okay, so they do give you they give you a, a few chances to get bond, but if you got a criminal record, even if it's just a, uh, even if it's just a misdemeanor or a felony, they they really won't give it to you. So me being a, I already I'm, I already had a prior conviction for uh, for cocaine in the feds, so I already went to the feds when I was 20 years old for half a key of cocaine. They use that against you, like they won't give you bond for that reason because you already have a criminal history, especially with the federal. Um, the federal law enforcement and marshals and stuff like that. Man, so, so was, uh, you uh -huh. got you were you got arrested at the height of your career. Uh, you're doing big things, big numbers. You know, you got songs with Kurt Cole. You know, and stuff with Trey the Truth. You're doing shows. You got fans and stuff like that, man. Um, Yellow Beezy, Yellow Beezy too. I had that one joint. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. Like that. and you did and you did a song with Yellow Beezy, man. Like. Was there any regrets, like, from that moment that you got, you know, got arrested? Because, you know what I'm saying, now it's, it's taking time from your music career. Right. Okay, so what, what what was the question? So was there, was there, did you have any regrets, you know, as far as just, um, you know, you, you got arrested at, you got arrested at the height of your career. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're right, doing right. Of, doing a lot of stuff, and then, you know, you got to go sit down, and you were right. you wanted to the artists that were on top, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Well, you know, I, with me, it's like in life, you always got to like, it's all about taking that risk. You feel me? Um, if you, if you don't, I feel if you don't make many risks in life, you probably won't be as successful as you, as you wish to be, if, if that makes any sense. So I'm the type of person, I've always been a risk taker. Now, not always for the bad reasons, you know, sometimes for the for the better cause, but at the same time, coming from where I come from, like my background, humble beginnings and stuff like that, uh, sometimes you got to take the risk, you know, sometimes you got to take a risk for, uh, for, for, to, to kind of, to kind of put your whole, your whole team on or, or to, to uh, you know, for a different reason, it could be financial reason, it could be anything, so in my situation, in my life, I'm used to taking risks, and usually I've been real good at it. You know, even taking a risk and, and leaping into the rap game like that was also a risk because, you know, who knows? Like, I, I don't know if I was going to be successful, and I, I just felt in me that I had to take that risk and try it and put that, put my career on, and my other other things I had on hold because like, coming out the feds, I had uh, also joined the uh, culinary arts in college, 
to try to change my life, but this rap thing was just calling my name. So I took that risk. I took that risk with that too. So with that being said, man, if it ain't really good to live with regrets, I'm always gonna take that risk. You feel me? It's just sometimes you gotta do things in a smarter way. But I do, I do feel. Um, how, how can I say this? I do feel bad that I had to sit down at the height of my career and right. and, and do another bid. But man, like I just, I I don't like to live with regret or say that I regret things because, like I said, I'm all about taking that risk. You know what I mean? Um, I, I heard it. I don't know. If it's too bad. Uh, hustle game with uh, Ti and Trader Truth. If I signed with Ti, well, you were you were you were in the process of trying to get signed. With okay, okay. I understand what you're saying. Okay, so I was in the process of getting a deal with with Hustle Game, but no, I didn't sign with Hustle Game yet. I was with Trey the Truth, Trey the Truth, and my manager and Trey had a we had that uh we had a we had a a, a meeting with Hustle Game, which Ti had had already became my friend, and as you can see in the, the videos and pictures, I have pictures and videos with Ti, and, and too many people can't get close to him like that. You gotta mess with someone around the camp. Tough to right. do that, so. So yeah, we they he took interest in me and he was uh they were contemplating they were trying to figure out a deal for me. Right. It's just uh what happened with the first time was uh Trader Truth, um he's he also does that release game, so whenever a, a disaster happens in Houston, he's always there for the community. So we put that meeting on hold for about ten months because another hurricane hit after Hurricane Harvey. I don't know if you remember Hurricane Harvey, but Yeah, 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 a, yeah. Okay, so me and Trey come in there. Everybody that Trey messed with, uh, well, we all went out there to help out. So after that happened, there was another disaster that happened. In, 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 uh, and I forgot what the hurricane name was right after Harvey because right after that I went to jail. But I forgot the name of that one. But because of that hurricane, they put that meeting off an another few months. And the month that was supposed to happen, which was like three months after I got uh, arrested, so. Um, I, I never got to reach the meeting because three months prior to the meeting, I, I caught my Fed case. So that really, that really would have changed my whole life and my whole career. And any type of any type of street activities and anything like that would have been eliminated after. But you know, I mean, everything happens for a reason. I don't know what that was, but before signing a major deal like that, I I, I catch my second Fed charge. You know what I mean? Oh man. Oh, but now, um, what what's your relationship with with Trading Two like now? Um, has he reached out to you since you caught your case? Has he what? Has he reached out to you since you caught your case? Yeah, he has a few times. He's uh he's reached out to my manager and asked him if I need anything and how I was doing and for me to call him. I called him a few times, um, you know things like that, you know. And he also told me that he was he was kind of disappointed in me, you know what I mean? But he's he's he, he's a street person himself, so he knows right. what it is, but. At the same time, he, he was telling me, hey, man, you know, stay out the way, this, that, and the third, and make sure you just keep doing your thing, keep hustling with the music and everything he was saying. And, you know, so, yeah, you know, me being involved in the streets like that, it did upset him a little bit, but he, under, you know, he understands the street life. So, with that being said, yeah, he has he has reached out. You know, Trey's a real good, humble dude. Always been the same, never changed up. Yeah, since, since, uh, since you've been locked up, has there been a lot of, uh, of fake love? You know, as far as people who weren't rocking with you when you were in the free world now that, you know, are walking around saying free favor and stuff like that, that probably didn't even want to jam your music. Are you are you dealing with that right now? Okay, so say it again. Is it people that are rocking with me or ain't rocking with me? No, like, it's, it, um, like are you getting any, have you gotten any fake love since, you know, you've been locked up for, like, for people that weren't rocking with you before, now that you be locked up, you know, they're walking around screaming uh, free Fabo. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe, but I really wouldn't know how, how to call that one because anybody that, uh, anybody that's screaming free Fabo, yeah, yeah, while I'm locked up is, is um, beneficial to me and I appreciate all the love I can get. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, I want I want to ask. Um, when you got locked up, you know there was rumors circling around. You know the city that you were you were in there snitching. Where did that, where did that even come from? <laughs> so 
So when I heard that, when I heard the few times that I did hear it, I just laughed because I ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. And if anybody ever wants to look me up, all you got to do is look up my name and my number, number one. Number two, uh, so I've been in the game forever. Before. Are you there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, basically, you know, there were rumors going around that he was missing. I mean, and where did that even come from? Okay, yeah, like I was saying, um, so this is something that no one knows about, but before I got locked up, some people had tried to rob me for my jewelry and all type of shit. So this is something that, that ain't too many people know about this except the people that were there. Right. So when, when, when dudes try to rob me at the strip club, cause I was one deep, I text my cousin and tell, told him, I, I just sent a simple text cause I had nothing. I, I couldn't make a call or nothing cause then people surrounded me. So I text my cousin and I tell him, Hey, they trying to get me at, at, uh, at PT's. That's all I told him where I was and what they were trying to do to me. And seven, eight minutes later, my, my, my cousin magic pulls up. So we turned the tables on them people. They were trying to rob me. And there was three of them and one and just me by myself. And they had pistols and shit like that. They were trying to take my jewelry. But somehow, I stalled them enough for, the, for my cousin to come. And when my cousin pulled up with, with, with his little goon, we turned the tables on them. So when we turned the tables on them, people, they were the ones that, they, they was, that was begging for us to let them go. So we did. We let them go. And instead of them being, you know, like, cool with that or, or humble enough to, to forget about that situation, because we turned the tables on them, they took it upon themselves. To, to like spread a rumor about me because I caught my case like 60 days later or between 60 to 90 days later. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. So that's where the first thing started from because well, then people try to rob me. We turned the tables on them. We made them look crazy. As soon as I get locked up and the dude that spread that rumor, he, he, he's a person that, that, that's a known snitch in the, in the world. So he tried to turn that on me. Cause he's like a jack boy and shit like that. So, right. with that being said, I've been in the game a long time. So, pe- rumors will come out like that about plenty of people when you're in the streets. It just happens, especially when you got clout, when you got a little bit of fame, stuff, stuff like that. So, there was a dude that ran with that, trying to say that I was snitching and while I was locked up. I called him in the cell. We finally, we finally seen each other in the cell about a year later, and he told me he apologized that he seen my paperwork and every and the. My paperwork was floating around jail, and, and they found out that I was solid. And, they and you know, he tried to apologize for it, but it was too late for all that. So I told him we had to handle our business. I actually knocked him out in the cell one-on-one. And, and anybody that was there in the feds with me at Limestone County, everybody that was there that seen the one-on-one fight knows what, what, what the fuck I'm talking about is it, 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 A1. I ain't, I ain't got a sugarcoat shit. I ain't got a lie. I ain't got to make nothing up. So the, one of the, the, the dude that ran with that rumor, I ended up, I ended up um, fighting with him. And, he apologized and all that, you know what I mean? But I told him it was too late for apologies and stuff like that. So they try to keep that rumor going, but 